Hi everyone, Byron at Logies, and today we're going to be talking about plant propagation. There are many ways to propagate plants, and one of the easiest ways in the home is to do it in water. And it's really quite a simple process. What we're going to do is we're going to take cuttings and insert them into these tubes. These are handy little tubes for small plants, which we'll fill with water, and then we're on our way. The first thing we have is a tretoscancher, and what we'll do is we'll take the cutting, and we're going to strip off that first leaf, or maybe even the second leaf, because on this particular plant, the roots are going to come out of that node or that place where the leaf came off the stem, inserted into our glass container. The other one is a peperomia here, and these are kind of trailing and thin, so you have to be careful when you pull your leaves off. And you can do um, multiple stems on this, so when your finished plant gets grown, it's much thicker. Here we go, it's, it'll straighten itself out. It's kind of tipped over, but it'll straighten itself out. And then we have a synagonium here, and we're gonna take the cutting. I took it relatively long here, but then I'm gonna strip that leaf off, and we're gonna stick that down into that tube to hold it. And then we have a philodendron here, and they're, of course, related to syngoniums, and the propagation process is pretty much the same. Remember, on these, we always have roots coming out of the nodes. They don't really come out of the stems. That's typical of a lot of aeroids. And so we're going to strip that leaf off. We've got one leaf growing here in our tip, and we're going to put that down in and then make sure that the roots get down far enough to connect with the water. Then once we're finished with that, we just need to fill them up. And we just use whatever water you've got and bring it all the way up to the top. You're going to get evaporation out of this over time, so you want to refill it. And you can also change the water if it starts getting filled with algae, which it can if there's nutrients in the water itself. And it doesn't do any harm to change the water, pour it out maybe once a week or once a month. You can keep your eye on it, but you are going to have to add water to it because of the evaporation. And so that will sit there for a very long time, it can, but they should start rooting almost immediately. These plants are quite easy to propagate that way, so within a week or two you should see little roots starting to form along the stem, and then they'll move out into the water where they can stay for a very long time. We have some examples of plants that have been rooted in water here that have been in the jar for a whole year. Because you're always under hydration, there's always water for the plant, you don't have to worry about the wilt cycle that often happens with propagation. You can put these in an area where there's good sunlight if they need it, or, or even in a dry room, and they're going to be fine. There's a time when you can repot them, and that is when the root system has really started to develop and become significant. There are a few plants where when you root them in water, the root system actually is kind of brittle. And so you have to be very careful when you're repotting them that you don't snap that off. So then we can also take other plants. This is a Myrcene, and we could root that. Now, oftentimes hormones are used for rooting. Um, this is actually not as easy a plant to root. But generally, when you stick them in water, because there's never going to be any drought stress on this plant or wilt stress, they in time will form their roots. And you can simply stick whatever cuttings you've got of whatever house plants you've got in a jar and go for it. Actually. When I first started working here a long, long time ago, my uncle actually showed me how to do that with alamander of all plants. And um, in those days, our propagating area was very small and we didn't have a lot of heat. And we actually rooted our alamanders, which are the um, golden trumpet flowers of the tropical areas in water. And those, that's where I learned about the brittle roots. Those actually have brittle roots. So once you've got the plant in and it's rooted, you can actually add a little bit of fertilizer to the water. That's going to make it grow faster. When you add fertilizer, you're going to increase microbial action and as well as things like algae growing in it. So you'll probably have to change the water more frequently. If you want to continue to be a water grower, which this little plant right here has been for over a year, then a little fertilizer will help a lot. If you're just going from the point of rooting them and getting them potted, then it's not necessary. You're just going to get those roots so they can establish in your soil pot. So then we have very large plants. So this is a Monstera, and you can see it's really got its roots growing. 
And if we're going to take a cutting of that, remember that it's usually the nodes that form the best roots. You can see down here it's going a little bit above the node and a little bit below. But these bare areas don't put out, that one's there's got a root on it. They don't put out as many roots. And so to do this, we're going to make a cut. Now, monsteras are interesting plants in that, and many of the aeroids are, in that the growing eye on that is not tucked down into here where the leaf comes out. If you look at most plants, that dormant eye, bud or that dormant eye is on there. It's actually right on the side here, I can see it. The green flesh on that has a little kind of off color and a tiny little bump. So that's where the shoot's gonna come out from this to regrow. So the question is, is how big a cutting do we want? And if we're gonna take the cutting, we gotta make sure we don't chop that off so this plant doesn't have to go another node below to shoot out. So I'd probably cut it right there. That's leaving a place for this plant to make uh, new growth. And then, because our roots are so large, we're going to trim them back. And as long as we've left some of this root tissue here, it will gladly start growing again from what's left on the stem there after the pruning. You can actually use a larger container for that. And there we go. We've made contact. The roots are in water you'll see roots will start to grow and once they start to really fill out the water if you want to pot it you certainly just pull it out and put it in some soil here's a great example um, from actually one of our employees took this home it was a pruning that came off during a pruning session here at logies and took it home and stuck it in water and you can see it has literally filled itself up with roots but it, do it doesn't mind it it really loves it in the water all beautiful white roots and you know if you want to make sure you've got healthy roots, then you use a glass jar and you can always keep a view of them. There it is. That's how to root plants in water. If you really like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel.